Hello people, welcome to Creative. In today's session, we are going to discuss some of the most common and popularly asked questions in Wipro NTH. If you take Wipro NTH, the platform followed is similar to CTS, right? So you'll be taking the same platform uh, where you took test in CTS, right? So which is AMCAT examination. So if you take this platform, you will be getting some repetitive kind of questions, right? So the most popularly asked questions are from the topic time and work permutation combination logarithms and questions from simplification so definitely this session is going to be helpful for you and you can expect similar kind of questions in your examinations right so i have included uh, you know more model questions of wipro nth here so here we have the first question on an average a programmer can develop eight modules in an hour Team lead wants to complete the project of 3200 modules in 1200 minutes. How many programmers should he take in his team? So here one programmer will complete eight modules in one hour. So this team lead have to complete 3200 modules in 1200 minutes. For that he have to hire how many people in his team? So this is our question. So this question is based on time and work, right? So we have the concept called man days hours by work equal to m2 d2 h2 by w2 right we discussed that in time and work so we are going to apply these values in that particular format so he we have one programmer right so one programmer working for one hour will complete eight modules now how many programmers are required to complete uh, 3200 modules in 1200 minutes see 1200 minutes means how many hours so divided by uh, 60 Right, so if we divide it by 60, we get 20, right? So in 20 hours, 3200 modules need to be completed. For that, we need how many programmers? This is our question. So simply cancel it. So it is 400 times because four times eight is 32. So it is 400 and so 20 into 20 is 400, right? And we can write question mark equal to one into one. So HH cancel and PP cancel, right? So question mark equal to 20 so 20 programmers are required to complete 3200 modules in 20 hours or 1200 minutes so this is the most popular kind of questions in wipro so are not not only in wipro as well as in cts also right so study this kind of problems as well now moving to second question for log x minus 7 minus log 7 minus x equal to 1 plus log 3 find the value of x okay so this question is purely based on the properties of logarithm so we have log a minus log b format here. So how we can write log a minus log b? We can write it as log a by b. And we have 1 plus log 3. So this 1 can be written as log of 10 to the base 10. So why we are taking log of 10 to the base 10? So if we don't have anything at the base, it is considered as 10. Right. So we can write log x minus 7 to the base 10 and log 7 minus x to the base 10. So this can be written as log 10 to the base 10 because value of log 10 to the base 10 is 1. Right. So we can write it as log 10 to the base 10 plus log 3. So log of x minus 7 by 7 minus x to the base 10 is equivalent to log of 10 to the base 10 plus log 3 to the base 10. So if you don't have anything at the base, we have to consider log to the base 10 only. Okay. Now again, if you took, if you look this, you have uh, the format of log a plus log b, right? So log a plus log b can be written as log a into b, right? So log a b. So you can write it as 10 into 3 30, right? So log of 30 to the base 10 and equal to log of x minus 7 by 7 minus x to the base 10 now log log can be cancelled now you are left with x minus 7 by 7 minus x equal to 30 so x minus 7 equal to 210 minus 30 x right so if you take this to uh, right hand side you get 30 into 7 210 30 into x 30 x now uh, take this 30 to left hand side and 7 to right hand side you get 31 x equal to 217 so x equal to 217 by 31 so this can be written as 7 into 31, 217, right? So answer for this question is 7, right? So this becomes our answer. So study the properties of logarithm also. This will definitely highly helpful for you to score good marks. So we shall go to third question now. In an offer sale, a shopkeeper sells a sport kit consisting of a zipper worth rupees 1001, a t-shirt worth rupees 300. 
and a pair of clothes worth rupees 1999 a socks worth rupees 200 for rupees 3000 what is the net saving for the buyer okay now the buyer is purchasing all these items for how many rupees so 1001 plus 300 plus 1999 plus 200 so totally we are getting how much so 1001 plus 1999 we get 3000 3300 plus 200 3500 so he is purchasing the 3500 rupees product for only 3000 rupees so how many rupees this uh what buyer saved so it is 500 rupees right so 3500 minus 3000 so 500 rupees he saved so this 500 rupees is how many percentage of 3500 because uh, he is getting that 500 rupees discount only from the 3500 right so this 500 rupees is how many percentage of 3500 so if we cancel we get 1 by 7 so 1 by 7 is 14.28 percentage right but here you have values only in decimal right so 14.28 percentage is nothing but 0 0.1428 right so it is 0.142 this becomes our answer right so far that we have to keep that values in our mind so what is 1 by 7 2 by 7 3 by 7 4 by 7 right so i have included that shortcuts in our description if you haven't watched please have a look at it now moving to next question of the session about three out of five staffs are excel workers if there are 400 employees in a department, how many would be non-Excel workers? See, this is very easy question, right? So out of five steps, three are Excel workers. So out of five, three people will work in Microsoft Excel. So remaining two people will work in, okay, they are non-Excel workers, right? So they are Excel workers and they are not Excel workers. And we totally have 400 employees. Now you have to find how many of them are non-Excel workers. So. 2 out of 5 of 400 is how much? So if you cancel this, you get 80. So 80 into 2 is 160. So totally 160 people are non-Excel workers. This is a really easy question, right? Okay, moving to next question. A scuba driver descends at the rate of 7.5 feet per 0 0.5 minute. A diver dives from a ship to search for a treasure at the depth of 6,000 feet below sea level. How long will he take to reach the ship? Okay, so what is speed of this driver? It is 7.5 feet per 0 0.5 minute, right? So in 0 0.5 minute, he will cover 7.5 feet. So in 0 0.5 minute, if he covers 7.5 minute, 5, uh, 7.5 feet, in one minute, he will cover double time. So it is 15 feet, right? So double time of 7.5 is 15 feet and double time of 0 0.5 is one minute right so in one minute he cover 15 feet so in one hour he will cover how many feet so one hour is nothing but 60 minutes right so in 60 minutes he will cover how many feet see 1 into 60 we get 60 similarly 50 in 15 into 60 we get 900 feet so we can say 900 feet per hour is his speed now he have to cover how many feet 6000 feet so it is 6000 divided by 900 so if we cancel this we get the answer so 0 0 cancel and 60 by 9 so what is 60 by 9 so it is 9 into 6 54 remainder we have 6 so we can say it is 6 6 by 9 hours right so we are writing in mixed fraction but if you closely look at the option you have only one value which is related to 6 is 6 hours 40 minutes and you have a whole number 6 hours so we can choose 6 hours 40 minutes now if you want to convert this fraction to uh, exact values so you can say 6 hours right so you have 6 complete hours so convert this hours to minutes so 6 by 9 hours is nothing but 6 by 9 into 60 right so we are converting to minutes so it is 2 times and 3 times again this is 20 right 2 into 20 is 40 minutes so if you want to convert hours to minutes, you have to multiply that by 60. So we can say 6 hours and 40 minutes. This becomes our answer. Okay, moving to next question. A number becomes a perfect square when we subtract 1 from it. Which of the given option cannot be the last digit of that number? See, most of the question in MIPRO are related to, you know, finding the square root or finding the cube root are from LCM and HCF. So we have to be thorough with this concept. Definitely you could score at least a one to two mark in your examination, right? So please prepare uh, with that particular concepts. So here we have the question, a number becomes a perfect square when we subtract one from it. See, we know the perfect squares always ends with which digit? See, if you take one square, last digit is one, two square is four, three square is nine, four square is 16. Look at the last digits, five square is 25, six square is 36. 7 square is 49, 
and 8 square is 64 and I am writing 9 square here so 9 square is 81 10 square is 100 and if I take 11 square I will be getting the same value right so what I am getting for 1 square I will be getting for 11 square also so 12 square I get 144 right so same value I am getting for 2 square so the perfect square will end with 1 4 9 6 5 that's it I mean 0 right so 0 1 4 9 6 5 so apart from that we won't get any numbers right so perfect square only ends with these digits only now you have to, so we have a number right so imagine we have a number 145 so if we subtract 1 from this we get 144 so this becomes a perfect square now they are asking which of the given option cannot be the last digit of that number right now if you subtract 1 from this 2 you will get last digit 1 so it is a perfect square right and if you subtract uh, 1 from this 4 you get the last digit 3 so is this a perfect square number so last digit of the perfect square number will not be 3 right so definitely answer for this question is option b 4 right so when you subtract 1 from that last digit of a number for example if you get uh, 144 this is actually a perfect square if you subtract 1 from it you get 143 is this a perfect square number no right so when you subtract 1 from it you have to get only the perfect square so 5 minus 1 you get 4 because 4 is a perfect square number and 0 minus 1 it's 9 for example if you have 10 10 minus 1 you get 9 so 9 is a perfect square right so perfect square will never end with 3 right so answer for this question is 4 because you are subtracting 1 from 4 it cannot be 3 so answer is 4 only so we shall go to next question now yes so we have the next question so it looks like little big but actually it is very simple right so when the question is very big the concept is very simple so this question is based on boats and streams a swimmer swims 400 meter upstream in 20 minutes b its speed downstream is 8 by 5 times its speed in upstream which option provides the correct relationship between speed of the current and speed of the swimmer okay so what is given the swimmer swims 400 meters in 20 minutes upstream right so upstream means against the water so against the water he is uh, he travels 400 meters in 20 minutes so in 20 minutes if he could cover 400 meters in one hour so one hour means 60 minutes right in 60 minutes he will cover how many meters so 20 into 3 is 60 similarly 400 into 3 is 1200 meters just cross multiplying right so we are cross multiplying so 1200 meter per hour is his speed right so 1200 meter per hour is his speed in what upstream right so speed of the uh, swimmer in upstream is 1200 meter per hour now it is given its speed downstream is 8 by 5 times the speed in upstream so down, downstream speed is 8 by 5 times the speed of upstream right so we can say downstream speed is 8 and upstream speed is 5 right so 8 by 5 means 8 is to 5 so downstream is 8 and upstream is 5 we know upstream speed is 1200 meter per meter per hour right so if 5 parts is 1200 meter per hour then what is one part so 5 parts is equal to 1200 then what is one part so 1200 by 5 we get 240 right so 240 meters per hour right now downstream speed is 8 parts so if one part is 240 meter per hour then what is 8 part 8 into 240 how much we get so 4 8s are 30 to 3 and it is 1920 meter per hour so we found speed of this swimmer in downstream is 1920 meter per hour and speed of the uh, swimmer in upstream is 1200 meter per hour now you have to find the correct relationship between speed of the current and speed of the swimmer we know uh, how to find speed of the boat and speed of the water right so here speed of the current is nothing but half of downstream speed minus upstream speed right so this is speed of the current so what is downstream speed here it is 1920 minus upstream speed is 1200 so if you solve it you get 720 so half of 720 is 360 now you found uh, speed of the current which is 360 now we have to find speed of the swimmer right so speed of the swim swimmer is nothing but speed of the boat right so that is half of downstream speed plus upstream speed right so half of downstream is 1920 and upstream is 1200 so if we add it we get half of it's 3140 right 
I mean, it's 3120, right? So half of 3120 is how much? It is 1560. Now we found speed of the boat, uh, boat is 1560. Now you have to find the relationship between current as well as uh, boat, right? So speed of the boat is 1560 and speed of the current is 360. So 00, zero cancel and this is in sixth table, it is two times and six times and in sixth table, it is six times. So this can be written as 13 is to three right so speed of the boat is 13 parts and uh, speed of the stream or current is three parts right so this is speed of the current and this is speed of the swimmer or speed of the boat right now look at the option we have option b so speed of the current is 3 by 13 times speed of this swimmer so we can choose option b right because speed of the current is only three parts and speed of the swimmer is 13 parts so we can see speed of the current is equal to 3 by 13 times the speed of the swimmer so this question is purely based on time speed and distance only we pursue this concept in boats and streams so this kind of questions are very popular so uh, we know the uh, test is based uh, test is completely adaptive right so you will be getting only difficulty level questions at last so you can expect this kind of question right so at the higher level difficulty it's very simple actually right we go to next question so again we have a question on logarithms log 2 to, to the base 6 plus log 108 to the base 6 is equal to dash and if you closely look at this question the property is nothing but log a plus log b so log a plus log b so how we can write log a plus log b it is log a b right log a into b so we can write log 2 into 108 is 216 to the base 6 so how we can write log 216 it is 6 cube right so you can take this 3 before log so it is 3 of log 6 to the base 6 so 3 into log 6 to the base 6 is nothing but 1 because log a to the base a value is 1 right so 3 into 1 is 3 so answer for this question is 3 right so these kind of questions are you know this will boost up your score actually you can easily score good marks in logarithm so prepare well on this particular topic right and and that's it for today's session and i have planned to include more videos on wipro nth and if you def if you feel this session is helpful please like the video and share it to your friends okay so stay connected with career deed and if you are preparing for wipro wish you really all the very best to crack your examination thank you